Good day everyone, it's me, Sir JR, and welcome to Learning Science Channel, Simplifying Lessons, Upgrading Learnings. If you are new to our channel, just hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated every time we drop a brand new lesson. For today's video, we are going to study about the concept of biodiversity, wherein this concept is connected to the central theme of biology, which is unity in diversity. So, let us start. What is biodiversity? The term biodiversity came from the word bios, which means life, and diversitas, which means variety. Therefore, biodiversity refers to the variety of life in an area. Biodiversity also refers to the existence of different organisms such as humans, plants, animals, and microorganisms in a specific environment. To better understand this, let us have Philippine biodiversity as an example. When people think about biological diversity, they are likely to quite accurately name Eastern Africa, the Amazonian rainforest, and perhaps Madagascar as very special places where remarkable plants and animals live. While it's true that some of those places have more totally species, but the Philippines as a biological storehouse has much to offer. Here are some facts about Philippine biodiversity according to ESE 150 documentary project. First, the Philippines is considered as one of the 18 mega diverse countries of the world, containing two thirds of the Earth's biodiversity and between 70% to 80% of the world's plant and animal species. It is the home of many endemic species, which means those are the species that can be found only in a specific location. In connection to this, the Philippines ranks fifth in terms of the total number of plant species and maintains 5% of the world's flora, and it ranks fourth in terms of bird endemism. Lastly, the Philippines is also considered one of the world's biodiversity hotspots because it is a home for the study of different species and also, it is considered as an area where many species extinction occurs. So this time, let us explore the different levels of biodiversity. As you can see, it is represented by a pyramid which shows the hierarchical levels of biodiversity. Let us start with the bottommost level, which is the genetic diversity. Genetic diversity has something to do with the existence of different genes within a given species. The best example right here is in terms of bananas. There are many genetic variations when it comes to their color and to their taste. So, the next level is species diversity. It refers to the existence of different species within the different or given group of organism. Best example right here is the existence of different big cat species such as the tiger, the lion, and the jaguar. Lastly, we have the ecosystem diversity. This refers to the measure of the number of the different kinds of ecosystem. Best examples are the existence of different biomes, which helps in catering the different needs and adaptation of every species of plants and animals. As you can see in this picture, it best represents the ideas of the three levels of biodiversity. The one that is on the leftmost part shows the idea of genetic diversity. As you can see, there are different birds in terms of their feather colors, but they belong to the same species. The middlemost column represents the species diversity, 
wherein you can see the different animals and plant species. And the rightmost column represents the ecosystem which you can see different habitats such as swamps, forest, and mountainous area. Now, why do we need to study biodiversity in the first place? It has something to do in terms of its economic value, I mean social economic value, and at the same time in terms of the specific study basis. Here are some reasons why biodiversity is important. First, biodiversity serve as a life support system for different species of plants and animals simply because they interdepend with one another. And also, it is considered as bioresource in which most of our food, clothing, and other needs are being extracted from. Let us watch this clip for more information. Biodiversity is a key concept in ecology and has importance on both local and global scales. Biodiversity is the degree of variation of life, or put it more simply, the number of different individuals and life forms in an area. Scientists usually measure biodiversity on either genetic, species, or ecosystem levels. For example, if you wanted to measure the biodiversity of beetles on a global scale, you would find that there are over 350,000 known species of beetle on the planet. However, if you wanted to measure the biodiversity of beetles locally, you might find only up to 10 or 20 species. The reason for this difference is that biodiversity varies greatly with the location, habitat and species being surveyed. In general terms, biodiversity tends to be highest at the equator and decreases at higher latitudes, i.e. as you get further away from the equator. Knowing this information, where would you expect to find the habitats with the lowest biodiversity? Pause the video and have a think. Habitats at the equator, such as tropical rainforests, usually have the highest biodiversity. So if you thought habitats at the North or South Poles, such as the polar desert, you're correct. It's important to know that biodiversity is not a static measure, but is responsive to numerous factors, including climate change. In fact, global biodiversity is generally thought to be declining right now. Biodiversity has declined in the past, and a total of five major extinction events have occurred. Currently, we are in the planet's sixth major extinction event, known as the Holocene extinction. There are many proposed reasons for the current drop in biodiversity. Some of those reasons are anthropogenic, meaning caused by humans. Anthropogenic factors include things like introduced or invasive species, such as the introduction of rabbits to Australia, human-induced hybridization, such as in plants to create optimal species of crop, overharvesting of resources, and global climate change caused by human activities. While humans aren't responsible for all of the current extinction events, there is good evidence to suggest that humans are affecting the world on a global scale and causing the loss of many important species. The loss of biodiversity could have catastrophic effects on our society and even result in the loss of our food crops. For example, bees are in huge decline and they are extremely important in the pollination of many plants, including our crops. There are lots of ways we can reduce biodiversity loss and even increase biodiversity, such as managing our land better, growing more than one crop, and including plants that encourage insect diversity, and also creating cities with space for other species. We shouldn't just focus on the rural areas, urban places can do their bit. By increasing the local biodiversity, we can help the environment to sustain itself and give it a better chance of withstanding the effect of global climate change. A healthy and diverse ecosystem can withstand and recover from disasters. Biodiversity is an important topic that affects us all. As a global community, we need to take action to protect our biodiversity on both local and global levels. Here are just a few of the free services a healthy, biodiverse ecosystem provides us with.
And that is all about biodiversity. So, as part of the community, how are you going to protect and conserve biodiversity in your own little way? Feel free to share your thoughts and write a comment on the comment section for it might inspire other people to do the same. And if you find our videos helpful, do not forget to subscribe, like, and share our videos. Again, I am Sir JR of Learning Science Channel and see you again on our next video.